Hello, welcome to Marketing Matters, the show where we explore all things marketing and uncover those things that matter for you and your success. I'm your host, Denise Malay, and my hope and mission is to bring marketing and technology to you in a way that's useful, without jargon, complexity, or confusion, so you can grow your business, expand your impact in the world, and build your best life. Today's episode is called Websites and Goals, and how to get the most from your site. But first, I'd like to share a quote with you from, from Lawrence J. Peter. If you don't know where you're going, you will probably end up somewhere else. Now, Mr. Peter is a PhD educator, psychologist, writer. He's the uh, author of the Peter Principle in Management, which, which kind of states that, you know, everybody ascends up the hierarchy and up the level and they keep doing jobs until they are so good they have to go forward until they get to a job where they can't perform well because it's beyond them and it was just a, a groundbreaking piece but what's really important is that it's planning ahead to know where you're going that is going to help you get there and get where you really want to go as opposed to just hoping that you get there or just following the leader I guess is what we're trying to say here so Let's move on. <clears throat> so today we're discussing setting up business goals, but do we know what that means? A business goal is an endpoint, an accomplishment, or a target an organization wants to achieve in the short term or long term. Business goals are an essential part of setting up priorities and getting your company ready for success, right, over a certain period of time by taking a step back and looking at what it is that you're trying to achieve and setting out to achieve it, you have a much better chance of making progress than if you just kind of keep one foot in front of the other and just keep moving from the next to the next. Having a plan actually helps you achieve what you want to do and what you set out to do. So it helps... Um, So business goals are goals that a business anticipates accomplishing in a separate, in a set period of time, right? And it's the broad outcomes that you desire. It's not necessarily the very, very small things or the, or the steps. It's, it's like a big overall directional plan, right? You can set goals for your company in general ways, you know, for certain employees or certain aspects of your business, but it's the broad thinking that you want to go for and what outcomes that you want to achieve, okay? And business goals provide you with a way to measure your success and they help keep everybody aligned and working together. So whomever you hire or whoever you're collaborating with, who your partners are, who your employees are, everybody by knowing the goal has in their mind that that's what we're working towards and it helps keep people focused, right? And it gives them a clear understanding about how tasks and actions contribute to the outcomes. So they understand that there is uh, an overarching thought process that directs their work to something meaningful and that helps them focus as well so I guess focus is a really big word and then you want to just make sure the company your company as an entrepreneur or larger is heading in the right direction um, sometimes it's easy to go down rabbit holes you know you, you you take on something in your company and it turns out to be much larger than you anticipated and that could take everybody in a direction for a period of time that isn't really where you wanted to head right you wanted to achieve something or you're looking for an increase in the bottom line or, or to roll something out and and everyone gets stymied on something and then it's very easy to get misdirected into something else that is dependent upon this, dependent upon that, as opposed to keeping everyone focused on one thing and dealing with a target if something goes awry. It, it's easier if you've planned ahead and, and you keep everyone focused. So 
they're very important. Goals are very, very important to set in life and in business. Now, business objectives are different, okay? Business objectives are defined, measurable steps to meet a business goal, okay? So they're specific in nature and they can be easily defined and then you can keep track of them and measure them to know whether you're having success towards your goal. And those measurable aspects are very important because it, it lets you know if you're planning accurately, whether you succeeded or not, whether you, um, whether what you invested your time and energy and resources into was beneficial or not. Okay, so it helps you plan for the future by knowing your success and your measurements on what you did in the past. Okay, um, so companies and individuals set they establish objectives to achieve their business goals, right? Um, so business goals versus business objectives, okay? Here are some ideas of the difference between the two. Business goals define the what of a business's purpose, whereas the business objectives define the how, okay? Business goals typically only provide a general direction that a company wants to follow, whereas an objective clearly outlines actionable steps and tasks. Business objectives are measurable, whereas goals are not. Okay, goals are more ethereal and descriptive. They are not as action-oriented and concrete as objectives. Business objectives, as I said, are specific, whereas goals are not. They're not, they're more broad and all encompassing of more things. So let's say you had different aspects of your business. You could set goals for the overall company and then have objectives within each different segment of your business to achieve that goal. Okay. Business objectives typically have a set duration or a timeline to achieve them so that they are measurable and you can determine success or not. So those are the big differences between goals and objectives, okay? Now, where do websites come into all this, right? And how can they help you? Well, let's say our long-term goal for my business is to increase brand awareness. Now, that's a typical marketing goal, brand awareness, brand is your company. And you just want more people to know about you, about your company, about what you do. And, you know, you're in a position right now where you know that there are a lot of people that know who you are and what you do. But you really need to get to that, that messaging out so that more people know who you are so you can bring in more leads and customers, right? Um, what you want to then say is, okay, well, that was my long-term goal. So what are the short-term goals to support achieving the long-term goal? Well, here are two goals. Increased traffic to your blog would help you because more people would be reading examples of your thinking and your thought leadership and your work. You could also sponsor a charity and become aligned with that charity such that you have the charity's base of followers would get to know you through your sponsorship to that charity. And so you could kind of work in tandem to get a new audience to be exposed to you. Okay, so those, let's say those are two short-term goals, right? So now, um, what are the business objectives to increase traffic to a blog? Well, the the steps you would take would be you release a new blog article weekly to your website. Then you would optimize the web page for that web article so that search engines would include it, like keywords, descriptions, everything you need to do to make sure that Google can read that page and include that link in your in search results for anyone who's looking in for, for information about what's included in the article that increases your exposure to people who are looking for your information about the topic you're writing about and about what you do, right? Then you would, another objective would be to post on social platforms every week with new article details. Now all three of these are measurable. 
for whatever duration. So let's say you want to say you want to set these objectives for a six month period. Well, you would have a spreadsheet or a chart or a document where you would say, all right, let's check off and make sure that we release a new blog article every week. And at the end of six months, you go back and you look and you see how you did. Were you 100% on point? Did you, did you miss a few weeks? Whatever, so that you know whether that's something that you can count on doing in the future. Then optimizing the web page for search engine inclusion is easy to measure because you can also, using your spreadsheet, do Google searches on keywords that are parts of your blog posts and see if they come up on search results. You can also look at all the links that are included on Google's database for your site and make sure each of your blog posts got included. And then tick that off on your chart to show that you were successful in getting it into search engines for every article that you released. Then the third thing you want to track is whether the postings happened on social platforms every week when the new articles were released with details about the article. And you could also add on to that how many, how many people visited the post, how many people tracked the post or liked the post or made comments on the post. You can also find that, that information. So armed with that, were you successful with the objective to increase traffic to your blog? And if you were successful in that six month period, then you can say that that success can help you along the way in increasing your brand's awareness, right? Here's another example. <clears throat> Excuse me. We talked about sponsoring a charity. And don't take this the wrong way. This is not meant to just use a charity to further your business. But we all follow charities and we all contribute to them. And as a corporation, there's, there's a feeling, at least I know I have, that I am about giving back as well. So if I am aligning myself with a charity that I believe in, then I want to provide exposure to that charity for the benefit of that charity amongst my audience. And I also want the charity's audience to know about me as well. So I'm not using that relationship as much as just making sure it's a both ways kind of situation. So let's say that you speak with the charity and you discuss how you want to align or you want to sponsor them or they have an event that you want to sponsor or they're having the event and you've bought a table at the event so you're trying to recruit people to attend a charity fundraiser for them, right? Well, you would have someone write a press release on the website that you are going to be uh, a sponsor for this fundraiser and you're going to do um, marketing for them or you're going to spread the word about the fundraiser or the charity and you're going to release that press release on your social media platforms and you're also going to put it on your web page and share it to the common press release channels. And you will measure whether people read it, whether it's seen, how many places it gets distributed to as success. And then you're going to have a web page about the charity and your relationship or the event you're sponsoring or how you're dealing with them on your website. And you want to make sure it's optimized so that search engines pick it up and include it in their results. So let's say someone goes to, let's say it's a charity for, you know, pediatric cancer that you're supporting, right? Anyone who's interested in pediatric cancer might get in search results that you're sponsoring a table for their major fundraiser. So you're providing content for the charity, more advanced content or, or uh, ex more exposure for the charity and also your connection for them helps you out as well. Then you're also going to post about the charity on all your social platforms on a weekly basis. And I again, I'm not saying troll it for just to get the charity's people to know about you, but to support, truly sponsor and support the charity. And that furthers your goals as well as theirs and it's a mutually beneficial arrangement or situation. Then you would also look to create online videos about the charity or the sponsorship for your website distribution. You can have them on YouTube. You can provide links to them in social media posts. You can um, include them in your newsletters. Uh, you could put footers on anything that you post about, hey, check out this charity. I really believe in it. You could interview other people that support the charity and provide exposure for the charity as well as associating yourself with it. 
and that is a good way to broaden your base, increase your awareness for your company and your brand while supporting something that you believe in. And as I said before, on the previous uh, increasing your blog awareness, the same things for the charity. You would make sure you post regularly, you would make sure you created the videos, and then every things that were your objectives, your tasks, you would have a spreadsheet or a document where you would track them for whatever period of time, say it's six months, did we succeed in doing what we said we were going to set out to do? And then you can measure on your websites how many visits came to the web pages about the charity. You could measure uh, for the blog post how many people visited your blog post pages and that also gives you measurable results to see if you succeeded in increasing your brand awareness. I hope that really that makes it clear about how your website can support what it is you're trying to do in a more meaningful, deliberate way. A lot of people talk about websites and um, they spend a lot of time telling you how wonderful their site is and do this and do that. And what I want to get to with you is there, you know, let's get down to brass tacks. Let's talk about the real things we want to achieve. Okay, let's, let's get to the real thing that's going to affect your business and what it is you're trying to do currently. And from there, take the time to plan it out, the steps that are going to help you achieve it. Now, you could call this strategic planning, you can call this marketing planning, whatever term nomenclature works for you. Your website is an integral part of the success of those campaigns and those activities and those goals and those steps. And whatever language you you resonates for you, whether you believe in the management style, business goals and objectives, or whether you want to just call it like tasks and steps, whatever it is that works for you, be deliberate about what you do on your website. So I hope those two examples were helpful. I want to also tell you that everything that you do for your website should have an objective or a goal attached to it not an objective, a goal. Whether it's a long-term goal or a short-term goal, it doesn't matter. It should be a part of a whole of a planning process that you do. And it should change regularly. You should you should look at it and revise it ongoing. Your, your website should not be a static thing that never changes. It should evolve with you and your business, okay? So for example, let's say you're just starting out and you really need more people on your email list so you can start telling people what you do more and presenting your offers to more people so that you can make more sales, right? So lead generation so that you can increase your income and your revenue. Okay, your website isn't just pages about with information about you. It should be a map. It should be a process of, of something that's going to start in one place and build upon it and build upon it and build upon it and lead somebody to your goal. So let's say your goal is to increase income and revenue. Your objective is to increase lead generation, meaning get more people on your email list so you can talk to them and present your offers, right? Well, the, the best way to do that, in my opinion, or one of the ways, is to create a lead magnet or a sample of your work to share with people for in exchange for them signing up to your email list. Something that's helpful, res resonates with them, it's useful, something they really could use and is attractive. Then when they see that opportunity on your social posts or on your website and they click on the link, they'll provide you their email address and their name and you give them a download of your sample and so that exchange has then increased the number of people on your email list so from your website's perspective you need a page that allows them to enter their information describes the the giveaway that you're created for them why they want it what's beneficial about it and accept their information and then start them down a process to send them a link to the downloadable document or whatever it is you're giving away. So that's the website piece. 
But in order for people to get to that website page, you're going to give the link in your social media posts. But let's say someone comes to your home page. How are they going to know that you have this free giveaway? Are you going to have a little part on your front page that says, hey, I've got this this great thing that you can download, this special guide to help you with this, this, and this. So you have to have a flow from your home page to the document. And when they get to the document and they get it, let's say they love what they see and they decide they want to talk to you about more work, right? Right away without waiting for you to email them an offer. Let's say they want to see what you have to offer what your website has to be prepared to answer that question that could arise from them getting your free sample. So you have to have a page that tells them how they can work with you or what your services are or what courses or programs you offer. Um, so it's the anticipation of the questions that someone's going to have when they interact with something of yours and preparing for it along the way. And by mapping out your goals and your objectives i.e. tasks or steps, you can help define those things. And then measure your success. How many people did you get on your email list after you created this giveaway? How many people just went directly to your offers and bought without even waiting for an email? Boy, that's a great number to know, right? That tells you interest. That tells you how much people really need your services. So if you think in these terms about processes and um, flows of things, you're going to benefit from it in the end because it's going to make you understand the steps that are needed and show you all the insights that you can gain from every step along the way. So that was a long-winded description of what website goals and how they can help your websites and goals and how you can use your website for specific things to grow your business and to achieve what it is you, you're out there to achieve. So I hope this has been helpful. Today, I have a free gift for you today. Um, let me get to it. It's called Five Website Strategies to Boost Your Business. And it can be found at https colon slash slash www.dmalay.com slash pl slash 214-758-9681. I'll give you a minute to copy that link. Um, this gives you the strategies to work towards goals on your website and I think it'll give you ways to repurpose content to support your goals and your objectives and I think it'll be great for you. So while you're writing that down, I want to take a minute to describe what it is I do in my business. I work with folks to get their technology set up to build their websites for them so that they don't have to. So they can spend their time focused on their area of expertise and on building their business and growing it so that they can achieve their goals and objectives. So if you'd like more information, please reach out via the um, email on my website at www.dmalay.com or there's also a contact page there. You can reach out to me. I'm also on social media, so please go there anytime you have a question. But I really like to help people get these things done, get them off their to-do list so that they can get the benefit of using today's technology to support them and grow and scale their businesses. So thanks. Thank you very much. I'm so glad you could join me for this episode of Marketing Matters. I know how precious your time is, and my hope is that you came away from this episode with some nuggets you can apply to your business. My aim is to provide clear, useful info so you can have a thriving business, amazing relationships with your customers and clients. And as always, if you have any questions, drop me a post on my Facebook page, go to my website, and um, join me here next week for our next episode where we'll dive into more marketing topics that matter for you. Thanks very much for your time.